Our next speaker, Andy Hill, Auckland Economic Strategy Branch from MB. I'll tell you what MB stands for since we got a little bit mixed up before. Andy joined the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment in 2020 as Director Auckland. His significant significant government experience and prior to his role spent 15 years working for the Ministry for Primary Industries, uh, focused on policy development and natural uh, resource management. Over that period, Andy has had secondments uh, to the Department of Conservation, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, and as Private Sec Secretary to the Honourable Stuart Nash, the then Minister of Fisheries, the then Minister again. Uh, he has a long-standing commitment uh, and has had a long-standing uh, had long-standing commitments to environmental sustainability and the science that supports it. Prior to joining government, he spent nine years uh, in marine research at Niwa. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Andy Hill. Uh, tēnā koutou katoa, no tamaki makoto aho, ki waheki aho i noho ana, ke he kina whakututuki aho i mahi ana, ko Andy Hill toko ingoa, no reira tēnā koutou katoa. Um, hi everyone, my name is Andy Hill, um, thanks very much for the introduction. Um, as mentioned, I started, uh, worked most of my career in the, um, in the ocean space, I started working at Sea Lord back in the day, spent the best part of a decade at Niwa, slightly longer at fisheries um, and MPI um, and operational policy, um, fisheries and agricultural roles. Um, at the end of 2020, uh, the wind and the weather here in Wellington finally drove me north um, and I now work as a policy director at the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment, based in Tamaki Makoto, working out of the Auckland Policy Office, um, but living in the middle of the Hauraki Gulf on Waiheke Island. Um, the main focus of my role is economic development. Um, and I mean, I'm not dealing with the immediacy of um, responses to COVID, floods, cyclones. I get a chance to look you know, more strategically at economic strategy and economic development. Um, so one of the pieces of work that I'm, I'm involved in with MB is the circular economy, bioeconomy strategy, um, which I can talk a little bit about um, further on. Um, but in terms of the question that was posed, um, what is the long-term, what do I see as the long-term healthy and productive blue economy? What does that look like to me? So I thought I'd just talk through quickly um, the opportunity as I see it, um, what realising that opportunity may look like, um, a few underpinning principles that I think are important, um, and just really briefly on some institutional considerations. Um, so starting off with the opportunity, you know, everyone in this room is fully aware of this and it's been um, canvassed already this morning. We have an EEZ of 4 million square kilometres, fourth largest in the world, 15 times the land mass of Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, our EEZ, an extended continental shelf, um, has a huge latitudinal gradient running from the tropics to sub-Antarctic. Um, there's significant biological and mineral diversity um, and as a location, as a group of isolated islands, mean that we're largely unchallenged in our access to those resources. Um, and our Pacific location also means we're exposed to significant wind and wave energy. So the opportunity for economic development um, in our marine region is, is really significant. Um, and I think we shouldn't lose sight that we're not starting from scratch here. We have a base to build on. We have a legislative framework, albeit somewhat disjointed, we have fisheries settlement addressing Maori rights and interests. We have an engaged science and innovation ecosystem, um, as many of you are involved in here through this National Science Challenge. So then in terms of what the opportunity um, would look like, um, for me, a successful blue economy in New Zealand will be diverse, it'll be innovative, and it'll be high value. It'll include the traditional and well-established fishing and aquaculture sectors, catching and growing biological resources, uh, but it will also incorporate renewable energy production from wind, waves and tides. Shipping will transport freight internationally, both in terms of imports and exports, so crucial to our economy. Cruise ships will bring tourists to and around our shores. Ecotourism, already been touched on how important that is, will be an important contributor, particularly to local economies. Um, more more um, 
tricky to manage will be things like rare earth minerals as we move into you know, um, the requirement for those for um, battery powered cars, etc. Um, that diversity will also be geographically diverse. So I think it's really important that we think of the blue economy in terms of delivering value in terms of jobs and businesses from that economic perspective at local, regional, as well as national scales. It will need to be innovative. Um, there are new opportunities that will need to be um, found from novel use of resources, new technologies, etc., and it will be high value. Less focus on commodities, more on high value products. So in terms of some of the underlying principles that we'd want to see in developing that blue economy, it must be sustainable, and to me that means ensuring that it provides value now, but also for future generations. It should be circular by design. It must be underpinned by a robust knowledge base. We need to understand the ecosystem the blue economy operates in, and we need to take, as has been mentioned already, an ecosystem approach to its management. It also must be resilient. You know, we can't ignore the impacts of climate change. Um, already been touched on in terms of seeing fish stocks moving. Um, there's going to be new biosecurity threats that we face. Um, the consequences of um, siltation from the recent weather events are a case in point. Um, so finally, just briefly on institutional and governance arrangements. To realise this vision will require a wider systems way of thinking than we currently operate under. Um, existing institutional and governance arrangements are not well designed to work across sectors. Local government boundaries, the territorial CEZ boundary, even the land sea interface at some level are artificial constructs, just lines on maps. With greater diversity of sectors involved in the blue economy, will come a greater need to effectively manage competing demands on resources, and those resources include access to space. We will need a robust framework that enables that to happen. Thank you.